And this Parsha, which is Parsha Chaye Sarah, uh, we, we started off with him, with, with uh, Abraham burying Sarah in the cave of Mephala. And so out of that is a verse that's going to be extrapolated that it says that Abraham was fulfilled in, in all his ways, like everything was perfect for everything worked out good for him. But we're going to scratch our head from this and we'll talk about it in a moment. Um, Sandy, it's yours to be able to let people in the room because I'm going to be focusing on, on the lesson. Uh, from this Parsha, uh, we can learn some of the secrets of the cave of Machpelah. And we've heard uh, a lot of commentary on it in the past. This idea to do this, we're, let's go back first to Lech Lecha, where we find God tells Avraham to rise and walk through the land, the length of it and the width of it. And he says, for I gave it to you. But then Avraham, it says, then Avraham removed his tent and camped in the plain of Mamre, which is at Hebron. There, he built an altar to Hashem after seeing all of the land. Avraham decided to go to this special place in the plain of Memre, which is in Hebron, and where there he is to build an altar to Hashem, the Blessed One. Now, in this week's Bash Parsha, we find that Avraham buried Sarah in the cave of Mechpelah, which is before Mamre. Then the same, the same is Hebron in the land of Canaan, Canaan, and Abraham was old and stricken in age, and Hashem blessed him in all things. Now, we must ask, what does it mean that he was blessed in all things? The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. Is this Hebron in, in the land of Canaan? Is it the same one? And why, after telling us after the burial of Sarah in Mechala, does the verse continue saying that Hashem blessed him in all things? The name Mechala means folded, and we all know that in a natural sense there are two levels in Mechala, the cave. Uh, we have one where there are, you know, of course, Adam and Eve is buried, and then we have the patriarchs that are buried, but they are in a double fold cave. Like you go into the cave and then you have to enter another level. But there is another meaning behind it. It says that the field and the caves rest on a two fold area, namely above the world and below, which re represents or signifies the world of physicality and the world of higher levels of spirituality. Thus, through this spiritual gate, all souls pass when the uh, when we leave this world so the idea is that no man will leave this world without going through these this two-phased um uh, existence physicality and spirituality that cave represents that and all the patriarchs including adam and eve are buried in the in the cave now mechla in hebron is called keriat arba meaning the city of four and if one goes to Mechpala, they will find in the caves the graves of Adam, Chava, Avraham, Sarah, Yitzhak, Rivka, and uh, Yaakov, and Leah. Now, it says that Yehuda gathers from the four corners of the earth. So where's the rest of the tribes? Where are the rest of the people? They come from the four corners of the earth and will be gathered in. This is Hebron, meaning to join together. Hebron actually means that. There in Hebron, Hashem requests to join them as one, as to say, in the Amidah, we read these words or say these words, gather us together from the four corners of the earth. So it sort of gives us a mystical idea that everyone eventually will gather in through Hebron or will be gathered by Torah. Now, every man or woman who occupies in the study of Torah is a part of this Hebron, or this gathering. Kiryat Arba is also called Hebron. In, it is the place where the four corners of the earth are gathered, meaning that from the patriarchs, where the Torah emanates from them or was given to them and then sent to the four corners of the earth, that all humanity will return in the same manner through physicality and spirituality, and it is Torah that will unite us 
all. Now, just after Abraham concluding his mourning for Sarah, he says he turned to the task of finding a wife for his son, Isaac. This is in this week's portion. The Torah lets us know that this will be the last act of the patriarch, Abraham, introducing this topic to with the words, Abraham was old, well along in his days, and the Lord had blessed him in all. The key phrase. Now, the Rambam tells us that the reference to, quote, all is an allusion to the one of the secrets of Torah, a greater matter, namely that God has an attribute called, quote, all. It is the yesod, or the foundation of everything. We know when we say achad, he's one, we're actually referring that he's complete, he's all. Instead of seeing Abraham's blessing only in the abundance in this life, in the good things he owned, he saw all as blessed. You get it? So when we say all, we're not just talking about the physical blessings. Now, Abraham, for all of his life, he saw a blessing, obviously. As the verse says, Abraham was old, well along in the days, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all. All or in Hebrew, kol, which the Zohar says that Sephria, Yesod, it also is speaking of a righteous person, a tzaddik. Abraham was blessed in all, in all these things. Abraham was blessed. In the last few Parsha, we have seen Abraham leave his father's house, smuggle his wife, and lose her. And this, his own life, is too different, uh, uh, life, two different lustful kings uh, had something to do with trying to hurt his wife. He has this tremendous struggle during a famine. Uh, Hagar is expelled and his son Ishmael suffers the feud between his, his own servants. You just see seemingly calamity uh, with Avraham, just one difficult thing after another. Lot wages war with a coalition of kings. Obviously, he won to save his nephew. Arguing with God about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, he actually asked God, please don't kill those in Sodom and Gomorrah. There was a deal struck, and obviously we know Lot and his daughters made it out. He was ordered to kill his own son, Isaac. I mean, for crying out loud, how is this blessed among all? Here we're going to show something very powerful that's going to affect us from this Parsha today. This idea of what is blessing. Abraham was blessed in all. Our sages tell us that Sarah had attained a greater level than even Abraham, a prophecy. Now, life is full of light in many ways, with eruptions of joy and sorrow, achievement, defeat, connection, isolation, vitality, illnesses, and everything in between. To see the hand of God only in one's happiness and successes is not to see God in the fullness of one's life. Do we understand that? Of course we do. We understand that a pious person will always see the hand of God in everything. When you see that something is wrong with a child, for example, you know, our own personal struggles as a family and illnesses, et cetera, et cetera, all of us choose to say, this is difficult, we don't want it, but we're going to look and see the hand of God. As we've learned from from Rabbi Nachman of Brislav to look for Hashem in the cracks of life. Now, to edit God out of the unpleasant aspects is a big mistake for us all. As all is the providence of God, everything comes by the hand of Hashem. Such a view can take away one's passion and ability to live enthusiastically and uh, uh, deal correctly with any given situation. It is only when we embrace God in the totality of life's experiences that we can truly live. By allowing ourselves to dwell with God in suffering that has come upon us, God forbid, and in any ecstasy of, uh, uh, even in any ecstasy, in the disappointment, the pain 
along with the delight, we can experience the fullness of being alive and the holiness of being itself. So the idea that we experience Hashem in every difficult situation, every joyous situation is amazing. Now, we often say, Karen said that she was going to have a new grandchild, and we all celebrated. We said, Mazel Tov. And we say, Baruch Hashem, bless Hashem. And some of us would say, God is so good. And all those things are true. The question is, is can we say that when calamity comes? Well, obviously, a pious person can very well say that because they know that God is good no matter what the circumstances. Now, the word memory, mamri, means rebellious. This refers to the one that were, were buried there first. The first to be rebellious was Adam and Chava. And also interesting to note that Mamri in Hebrew has the same letters as Aram, the father of Moshe, a man who never said. Now, the opposite of the rebellious Khan, Adam and Chava, it will be from Abraham's son, Moshe, who brought down the Torah from the Mount Sinai. That word will be redeemed from its current rebellious state. Mamre will, Mamre will no longer be considered a rebellious concept or idea. As we learn from the light, uh, the joy of light or, or Hachaim, that the final redemption will occur in the merit of who? Moshe. The redemption has been so long delayed because Moshe refused to invoke his merit, his merit being the merit of Torah study that is so lacking in these later generations. It says, the prophet says that in the time of the end before Mashiach, there'll be a hunger, a famine in the land. And the famine won't be of bread. It won't be of water but it will be a famine of the word of Hashem, the Torah itself. And Baruch Hashem, we are all involved in propagating out this nutritious meal of Torah each week as we study the Parsha, as we study these, these concepts. But we also are this light of joy to people because we embody the Torah. God willing, all of us with this highest level of perfection embodies Torah where they can see us experiencing all blessing, and we consider all things a blessing, even the difficult things, even the tribulation, even the wanting, the famine, the struggle. Hashem is all. And for all of us going into this, this age that we're living, it seems that a lot of, lot of darkness on the horizon, don't look at that. Remember that it is darkest before the dawn. And Guys, we have a great day coming ahead of us. We have great future ahead of us because Hashem is doing a special work in the world and Torah is being spread all over the world because of great teachers like Rabbi Zvi Avner and Rabbi, um, Rabbi Wobi, et cetera, Rabbi Yaakov, uh, Abraham ben Yaakov. All of these rabbis who have given and dedicated their life to bring Torah to the non-Jew, what a blessing that we were born and live at this time of our life. So may we, as we approach our days and weeks to come, that we see everything in our life as a blessing, everything in our life as an instrument of God's work, even the most difficult things. So may you go in peace. And this concludes my, my short sure, and we'll get into discussion and uh and ideas that you have. So let's open the floor. Who would like to be first? 